Now, we're getting ready to kick off the 2022 diving season. And of course, we're starting to look at equipment. Maybe you don't own or you haven't bought your dive gear yet, so you'll be renting equipment. And what I wanted to do is go over some of the equipment that you may be renting and a little bit about what you should be looking at and paying attention to for the rental gear that you're going to be paying for. Now, most of you divers out there own your own mask, fin, snorkel, booties, and mouthpiece. I kind of call that scuba underwear. It's kind of corny, but it, it is what it is. If you're out there snorkeling or if you're enjoying yourself uh, between dives, then you're able to use that equipment and it can be a normal expense when you get certified. Now what we're going to be talking about for rental gear is we're going to be talking about wetsuits, we're going to talk about regulators, we're going to talk about BCs, and we're going to discuss some things about tanks, and we're also going to cover computers, and we're going to talk about, and don't forget your weights. You're going to hear me say that a lot during this video. Don't forget your weights. So let's take a look, and we're going to look at wetsuits first. So the first thing you're going to pay attention to is, of course, just put it near your nose. Does it smell clean? Does it smell okay? That's one of the first things you're going to pay attention to, of course. We all know what people do in wetsuits, or they lie about doing in wetsuits. So when rental wetsuits come back, I know here at Diver Supply, we ask that they be rinsed, dried, and then once we bring them back, we also sanitize them and then hang them up to dry before you use them. Now, you're also going to feel the thickness of the wetsuit. Now, again, most of you know and have a, a good idea about where you're diving, what thickness you're, you, you really need, what your tolerance for, for water temperature is, but most of the time you are going to have to likely ask somebody. But, you know, somewhere in a three to five mil is kind of the norm down here. So when I talk about squeezing the wetsuit, you want to feel the wetsuit and it wants to, you want it to feel spongy, spongy. And when we're talking about it feeling spongy, what we're talking about is the fact that the the neoprene has resilience to it. Many of you may not be aware of this, but neoprene is not solid rubber. It has little air bubbles in it. And those air bubbles are what help keep you warm. And if those bubbles are collapsed or that wetsuit is old and hard, then that wetsuit is not going to keep you warm. Now, reach back here and check the zipper area. The zipper should work well. It should not be damaged or frayed. And of course, up here at the neck, you usually have a Velcro closure back here. Make sure it's got good Velcro on it, okay? Remember, you're paying for the rental, so make sure you're getting decent, uh, usable equipment. Now, when you hold the wetsuit, take a look at the seams. Are the seams all uh, there? Are they properly um, stitched? Have they been, some of them have been re-sewn, that's okay. Now, let's take a look at our regulator set. All right, when you go in to pick up your regulator, make sure that you're familiar with the regulator that you're renting. This particular regulator has a normal octo with it and second stage. And it just depends on the shop as to the quality of the rental gear that they have out there. This happens to be a hog unit and uh, is pretty reputable and is a great breather. And one of the things you want to take a look at is 
does the first stage, is it a fixed first stage? Is it, does it have a turret on it? Again, understand how those two different things mount and work on your tank. Take a look at the hoses. Make sure that when you look up here at the hoses, give it a little bend like that and look to see if those hoses are dry rotted. And that's on the high pressure gauge, on the inflator hose, on your second stages, check all those. And one of the things that I like to make sure, and we do here in Jacksonville, is we put a leash on the uh, console so that this unit is not dragging along the bottom because maybe somebody tried to stick it in their pocket or they didn't care about a leash on it. All of you folks in your Save-A-Dive kit should have an extra leash and hopefully an octo holder just in case where you happen to, uh, where you happen to rent doesn't have those things. Now, also, when you look at the second stages, make sure you flex the purge covers to see if they're dry rotted, that sort of thing. Now, this is before you ever mount it on the, on the tank to test it. And if it's got an adjustable second stage, like what you see here on the side, make sure that it operates smoothly. And of course, check the same thing on your Octo. Now, pressure gauge. Some of the gauges will be just a pressure gauge and a depth gauge. Some of the shops out there, they rent a unit that has pressure and a depth and a compass on the back, or there may be a pressure and a dive computer located right here instead of a depth gauge. Now, let's take a look at the BC. All right, the BCs, there's lots of brands and types. You know, there's back inflates, there's jacket styles, there's back plate and wings and such. Probably the most common that you're gonna see out there is the jacket style BC. And when you pick it up, they bring it out and, and you take a look at it. Take a look at the inflator hose. See how the inflator deflator. Maybe they're bringing you one that has an octo inflate instead of a standard inflator and an octo. It depends, so check it out. Make sure you look at the things as the buckles, make sure that they move smoothly. Check the zippers to make sure so that you don't want to bring it back and then all of a sudden you see that it's got a zipper that's not working and now maybe a shop is saying, hey, you broke the zipper, you got to pay to have it repaired. So double check, make sure that that zipper works. And also, double check to make sure you've got your weight pockets in there. Do they pull out? Do they have good Velcro on them? If they've got bad Velcro on it and it's a front facing, then if you happen to go face down and that opens up and your weight falls out, that doesn't do you very good. Now, make sure that uh, if it's a zipper, check to see if the zipper works instead of the Velcro on that integrated weight pocket. Some of the uh, BCs actually have uh, trim pockets on the back like this BCD does. And this one has um, buckles on it and it's got Velcro, which is nice. If it's just Velcro and the Velcro's worn out and you go head down, feet up, and this opens up and you lose your weight, that's not going to be a fun situation. So make sure you check to see what the condition is on the Velcro on the trim pockets or if it's got trim pockets. Take a look at the tank strap. Is it a standard plastic cam style tank strap? Does the Velcro on the tank strap secure? Some of the tank straps have been used to within an inch of their life and they won't stay closed and now you've got this, this danger sticking out here ready to catch on somebody's wetsuit and pop the tank strap loose and a tank falls out. So make sure it sounds insignificant, but make sure 
that that Velcro on the, um, on the tank strap works for you. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the tank and then we're going to mount all this stuff. All right, we've got our tank out here. Now this is just a small 63. And sometimes if it's a little person, then a 63 works just fine. A big guy, you know, the normal rental tank is an 80 cubic foot tank. But if his significant other is shorter, smaller, doesn't use as much air, and doesn't want to get hit in the back of the head or top of the butt with that big long tank, maybe they would like to use a shorter tank. But I'm going to point out a couple of things on this particular tank. Now, as you can see, this tank has a, or what's left of a nitrox uh, label on it. And it's okay, you know, if you're nitrox certified, then this is the sort of thing you're gonna need. Now, you'll see that this one has the nitrox wrap on it, and that's okay if you're nitrox certified, that's what you're gonna want. You're still gonna check some similar things on the tank before you analyze the nitrox tank. But let's just talk like this is an air tank. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the hydro or manufacturing date on the tank to make sure that that is good, okay? And then we're gonna turn and we're gonna take a look down here at our VIP or visual inspection program uh, sticker to make sure that's good. Now, hydro, five years, VIP, one year. And of course, then we're gonna take, and we're gonna turn the tank around, and we're gonna take the dust cover off, and it's always nice to have a dust cover on here. Uh, basically, all it's doing is keeping any dirt or dust and here in the shop, we consider a cover on, on the tank valve to mean that this tank is full. We're assuming this tank is full, and we're gonna check for that in a minute. Now, we're also gonna look right in here to double check that O-ring to make sure it's okay. We wanna make sure that it's not damaged or frayed, it's properly seated, and of course, some people don't realize it, but these oak rings can be different colors, green, brown, black, it just depends. I've even seen somewhat clear ones out there. But you wanna make sure that that O-ring is in there. You don't wanna just leave this on there, take the tank, somebody's word for it, and walk out. So take the dust cover off, check that O-ring, and put a pressure gauge on the tank before you ever leave the shop. Now, the next thing we would do is look for any damage on the tank. If it's got a big dent in it, like it fell off a truck or something, that's not a tank that you wanna be utilizing. And of course, we're gonna make sure that the tank is clean. And of course, if this tank is marked for nitrox, then we're gonna wanna analyze this tank to make sure that if you're not nitrox certified, that this tank does not have nitrox in it. If there's no wrapper on here at all, no sticker on here that talks about nitrox, you're fine and dandy, usually you're in great shape. So now, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna put this whole unit together and we're going to see how it functions to make sure we're good there. As I'm mounting this BC, I want to point out a couple of things that I, I'm kind of surprised that some of the people out there, some of the divers, don't really realize that this cam has a, a real function. And what I've done is I've unthreaded the cam from the first slot right here and the strap and I'm going to give it a little tug and when I tug it like that what it's doing is tightening this strap up around the tank. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the cam and I'm going to stand it up straight. It's got little flat places right up here on the top of the cam so that when you stand the cam up it maintains tension on the tank. 
And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my uh, tank strap, I'm gonna run it through, and once I get it through there, I'm just gonna hold it by the tail, pull it on across, do you hear that pop? Pull it on across and I'm gonna seal my tank strap down. And of course, I've got my valve strap up here around the valve. Sometimes if you don't hold that valve strap up out of the way, it'll end up down here between the backpack and the tank. And you want it around the valve, it'll help you assemble the unit. Now, I'm gonna put the reg set up. Now again, this is important for you guys out there because if it's been a year or something since you dough, you may have forgotten some of these little unique tips that I'm putting out there to you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold predominance of you out there are right-handed. I'm gonna hold the first stage with my left hand, and this is a, a yoke unit, of course, or a clamp. I'm gonna unscrew the yoke knob, and I'm going to push the little dust cover that protects this out. And then I'm going to look inside this opening to make sure that that little filter in there doesn't look like the bottom of a truck stop toilet because you're gonna be breathing that in a few minutes. So it looks good. So I'm gonna reach up. I'm gonna put it on my tank valve. Remember that little circle of metal right there goes against that O-ring. And I'm gonna hold down the yoke with my thumb. You see that? I'm gonna hold that yoke down. I'm gonna tighten the knob with my fingers. And I'm pushing down with my thumb and I'm tightening with my fingers only. I'm not gonna put my hand on this yoke knob. I don't want to over tighten it. I wanna push and get it as tight as I can get it using my fingers only. And now I'm in good shape there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start over here on the left side. I'm gonna reach down here and I'm going to check this little slip ring. You see that moving up and down right there? Now, these things sometimes become corroded when they're dove in the, in the salt water a lot. So there can be a lot of green goomba in there. And again, who's paying for rental of this equipment? You are. So make sure you're getting decent, well-maintained equipment. So make sure that little slip ring moves up and down nice and smooth. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna pull it down and silver again goes to silver. And now I'm attached. I'm not gonna worry about putting it all in here just for this little test run. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up my pressure gauge and I'm gonna take my pressure gauge. I'm not gonna look at it when I turn my air on. I'm just going to simply put it into the back of the BC, reach up here, slowly turn my air on, and I can feel my hoses stiffen up a little bit. And then I'm gonna open, 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 all the way until it stops back here and then I'm just gonna take the pressure off that stop just a little bit. Yes, there's a whole thing about why we push it back or roll it forward a little bit, and I'm not gonna go into all that. There's plenty of videos out there about that. But I'm gonna take a look at my gauge, and I'm going to check my pressure in this tank. Now, this is a 3,000 PSI tank, so hopefully it should be about Oh, 3,100, something like that. Of course, if you're gonna jump in the springs and it's 95 degrees, that 31 is gonna drop down to 2850, 2900, something like that. But you're gonna wanna make sure you check your pressure because again, you're paying for the rental tank. And this is where you're checking the pressure before you ever leave the shop. If you're just renting a tank, now, some of you guys out there are not gonna rent all this stuff. You're just gonna rent a rag or you're gonna rent a wetsuit or just a BC. Then take from this video what works for you, okay? 
but I'm checking my pressure. I've got good pressure. I'm going to take my leash. If I was completely assembling this unit, I would take my leash and I would connect it right here to my BC. But I'm going to be taking it apart, so I'm not going to connect it right this second. Now, I want to make sure that I test breathe my regulators. I hold the unit correctly, and when I talk about correctly, I'm talking about the mouthpiece is up like this, and the vents are pointed down. I never, I always tell students, never ever get in the habit of holding a second stage in an upside down. Now pointing it down is fine, but never turn it upside down. Don't get in the habit of doing that. So I'm gonna hold it like this. I'm gonna turn it away, give my little purge button a quick push, and then I'm going to turn it, and I'm gonna look in there to make sure there's no spiders or no you know, big fat little cucarachas in there. And then I'm gonna take a big breath, put it in my mouth, and I'm gonna blow. And then I'm gonna make sure I breathe in and out three times. Now, if I breathe through it and it honks, that's okay, all right? Because these units are made to be breathed upon with a little bit of water pressure here. So if it honks a little bit, it's okay. All right, now this particular BC actually has an octo pocket right here. Try to turn this around, there's an octo pocket. And some of the rental BCs out there you're gonna see have octo pockets. If they don't have an octo pocket, that's why I say in your dive kit, you need to have an octo holder so that now you can take your octo and you can either put it in your octo pocket or attach it to your octo holder either here or here in your triangle and now you're in good shape. Now, I'm gonna reach down and I'm gonna test my primary exactly the same way. I'm gonna turn the primary away from me, give it a quick push and then I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna look. Now, one of the things you're gonna notice on this one there's no mouthpiece on here. Now, the reason we don't put a mouthpiece on here is, would you use my toothbrush? Probably not. So have your own mouthpiece. Make sure that when you use it and you put it on your second stage to dive with, then when you get done diving, pull it off of there. Make sure you zip tie it on there for your dive. Then break the zip tie, take it off, and take that mouthpiece, best place to keep it right in your mask box, okay? So I pushed it, I looked to make sure there's no spideys or no little creepy crawlies in there. I'm gonna take a big breath, put it in my mouth, and I'm gonna breathe through it at least three times. One of the things you're gonna notice about the way I teach testing a regulator is to make sure the regulator, any regulator, is always tested at least three times. All right, at least three times. Now, again, I've got my whole unit put together. I'm not hearing any leakage from the regulators. Now, what I want to do is check the BC to make sure it will hold air, that it will provide positive buoyancy for me, it'll provide neutral buoyancy for me, and it will provide negative buoyancy for me. And that's what a BCD is all about. Weights in there help us get down, but adding air help us be neutral and positive on the surface. Now, I want to repeat one thing. BCDs are not an elevator. Don't use them like they're an elevator. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna reach down here. I'm gonna make sure that right down here that my cummerbund is closed and that my belly buckle is closed. That's gonna help me with what I'm doing next. I'm gonna take the BC inflator, you see that? 
and I'm going to inflate the DC. So I know the vent up here works, that this unit was well rinsed. And so I want to check all my dumps to make sure my dumps work. So the first dump I'm going to use is this one. I'm just going to give it a quick, it works, perfect. So I just tested the pull dump. A lot of times people don't realize that many of these BCs, if you hold here and you're wearing the unit and you pull on it, here, I'll try to get close so you can hear it. It will vent off this back left corner. Now I'm gonna come around over here on my right shoulder. All of you guys that watch my videos know how I feel about right shoulder dumps. So here's my knob my right shoulder dump again you probably can hear this hear that and then down here at my right buttocks as our friend Forrest Gump says um, I'm going to pull that to make sure that works so everything works as far as the BC is concerned so I can now disassemble put everything in my dive bag and I'm ready to check out all right, so I turned my air off. I came down, I purged my second primary, I purged my octo. I came over here when I did that. I checked my pressure gauge to make sure it read zero. I disconnected my low pressure inflator hose. Now I'm ready to take my first stage. If you try to take this first stage off and you can't unscrew it, you better double check your pressure gauge because you've either not turned the air off or you didn't purge your regulators to bleed the system. So I'm going to unscrew my yoke knob and I'm going to reinsert my little dust cover, my little protector dust cover. Snug that down, put this out, put my reg set out of the way. And I've loosened my tank strap. And all I'm going to do is loosen my valve strap a little bit. And then I'm just going to lift the BC and walk the tank strap up. And when I take it up and off, I'm going to re-secure my tank strap on the back. And then I'm going to make sure I put my dust cover back on my tank. Now, like I said, we're gonna move over to our checkout counter and at our checkout counter, I'm gonna make sure that I've got weights. Weights, softy weights or hard weights. Now, one of the things you can't be absolutely positive of is the fact that when you get to the charter dive boat that they're going to have all the weights that you need. So consider maybe owning your own weights, have your own little weight bag. Uh, try not to put your weights when you get the weights. People have a tendency to want to put the weights in their dive bag. Best way in the world to destroy your dive bag. If you've just got to put them somewhere, put them in the BC, and then put the BCD in the dive bag. But it's better if you've got 10, 12, 14, 16 pounds of lead, put that in a separate box or, or get yourself a little uh, weight bag to put your weights in and such. And of course, if you've been trained to dive with a dive computer, ask for a dive computer. This is your best friend. One of the first things I recommend people buy after having their mass fence, snorkel booties, and, and wetsuit uh, would be to have a dive computer. And that way you become familiar with the operation. If you fly somewhere, it's easy to put that mass fence, snorkel booties in your check-on, put that and take your computer on your carry-on on the airplane, on the airplane with you. So again, weights and computer. If you're not familiar with the computer that you're given, there's a ton 
of YouTube videos out there about all of these different computers. This happens to be the Maury's Puck Pro. It's Nitrox compatible. So you can, if you're Nitrox certified, then you can dive Nitrox and uh, monitor your uh, depth and such according to your Nitrox tables. And of course, then you want to make sure that if you don't have uh, recent experience diving, because if it's been a couple of years since you folks have dove, you really want to consider doing a refresher. And so w with us here at Diver Supply, you can call us, you can do a group refresher, and that's a lot of fun, or if the group refresher doesn't interest you, you can do a private refresher. That way you and the instructor can work on things that make a difference to you. Maybe you need some work on your trim. Maybe you have forgotten a little bit about assembly, things along those lines, how to descend, and more importantly, how to ascend. So private, or group refreshers are really important. Now, at the end of the video, I'm going to put about a 30 or 40 second uh, picture of a really good checklist for you. Now it's extensive, and I wanna remind everybody that, that don't forget your dive card, all right? A lot of the agencies have the dive cards online or e-cards, uh, cards, uh, certification cards that are downloaded to your phone, and that's okay too. If you have your dive card, uh, take a picture of it, both sides of it, with your, with your phone if you don't want to carry that card with you. You're more likely to keep up with your phone than a, than a card, actually. And that way, I actually still have my original dive card in my back pocket from 1970. So it's kind of fun to keep that sort of thing. All right, so that, that's kind of a rundown about things that we need. Uh, when you bring this equipment back, and I want to say this just a bit stronger than anything, I've, uh, anything else I've said, return the equipment clean, rinse the wetsuit, hang it up and let it dry. Make sure your BC is not full of water. Make sure it's clean, no sand and stuff on it. And of course, if you've paid the, the shop a, uh, a cleaning fee, return rental fee, then you want that back. So you want to return that equipment nice and clean to get that rental fee back. All right, so again, I'm Bob Collins for Diver Supply. Really appreciate you guys watching out there. And as we always say, dive safe. See you again soon.